Dr. Eddie, if you could go first, introduce yourself. Many of my community already know who you are. I've seen you on, on my YouTube channel, but give us a refresher on a little bit about yourself, what your business is, what you're focused on, and if there's any key opportunities in your particular space that you're doing, that you're working on, that you, you think that if there's other business owners in the house, that they can benefit from that. So I'm going to give you the floor. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Brother Denzel. Good to see everybody tonight. Uh, we know that information changes situations. Uh, somebody said, uh, if you hang around nine broke folk, you'd guarantee to be the 10th one. And so we're glad that we're in a room full of individuals who understand uh, that uh, their, their, their mental health is their wealth, but also uh, uh, that they are in key contact, knowing that their network determines their network. And so we're, we're grateful for the one and only uh, genius of finance, the finance geek himself, uh, Denzel, who has been uh, so instrumental in many of our lives. He's been instrumental in my life as well, uh, helping me to be a better man, but also helping me to think uh, more critically about my finances uh, and in connection to the kingdom. He, uh, each and every single month, the third Wednesday of every month, comes into my academy and I have an academy focused on faith, identity, relationships, speaker training. Uh, I share my story ardently and, and transparently as a survivor of stage four cancer. I've been able to turn uh, my pain into profit, but also empowering other people to overcome obstacles. I've written 14 books now. Uh, my 14th book is getting ready to come out on uh, June the 14th called uh, The Mask of Masculinity. Uh, I'll hold this up. This is a book for uh, all the men and the women who love us. Uh, healing from emotional incarceration, uh, really uh, discovering how men can reclaim their identity, lead and love with vulnerability, uh, being able to get in touch with, uh, as T.D. Jakes would say, our he motions. Um, and so I, I talk about many of those things in, in my books. Uh, and then, as I said, again, circle back with the academy, focus on faith, identity, relationships, speaker training, really empowering people to be their best selves. We talk about uh, breaking generational curses, overcoming intergenerational trauma, uh, healing from the inside, how to really pivot and prosper, uh, even in the midst of a pandemic or where the, the fact that we're coming out of uh, one, uh, being able to recognize how to tap into uh, inner and true wealth, because if you can't tap into it internally, you'll never exceed, you'll never be able to seize it externally. And so uh, to get more information about our academy, you can go to DrEddieAcademy.com. As I said before, uh, Denzel does such tremendous work and he comes into uh, our academy each and every single third Wednesday of the month to just give us financial insight and development. So if you want more information, again, go to DrEddieAcademy.com. We'd love to see your face in our digital space. Thanks for the opportunity to share. Thank you, Eddie. And is there anything in particular, you know, you say you're writing a book, you've written 14 so far. Um, is there anything in your, you know, business industry as a, uh, what would people call you a relationship coach in your academy or an author speaker? I mean, people throw a lot of terms at you. You're even yeah. like doing uh, uh, services on Sunday. I've seen you on your YouTube channel. So mm -hmm. what do people kind of, you know, put you in certain titles and what opportunities are you taking advantage of in your business today? Yeah, um, author, speaker, uh, em empowerment speaker, really. And uh, so I do some life coaching in that, uh, whether it's one on one or, of course, within the substratum of uh, my academy. Uh, some of the uh, opportunities that I've really just been able to seize is uh, really uh, leveraging social media, leveraging uh, the, the the online digital space in place of uh, especially YouTube, um, continually putting out your content being very consistent with that. Uh, Denzel, you talked on our academy about uh, creating content for 90 days straight, each and every single day, uh, not missing, but hitting uh, your clientele, hitting uh, prospective clients, uh, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all of it, um, and, and being able just to share your message and then also monetize your message. Uh, whether that's through a book, whether that's through an, uh, an academy like I have, whether that's through some uh, teaching and training, one-on-one -on -one coaching, whatever the case may be, discovering what it is that is your specific purpose. Asking yourself questions such as, what were you created to do? Who are you? What do you want out of life? Where are you going? What type of individuals do you want coming with you? Uh, being able to hone in on your specific niche uh, is really going to set you apart to where anybody can do what you're doing, but they can't do it like you. They can't beat you being you because you have uh, an, a unique identity and fingerprint on what it is that you do. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. I'm going to I'm gonna switch gears and jump to uh, Alex, if you don't mind. Oh no, I have to follow that up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what an intro, this guy, Eddie. Amazing, I'm sold. 
Yeah. Appreciate it. Man. Listen, wow. that, the guy's a magician with words. I, I told him <laughs> off camera. Yeah. <laughs> you and I are good. This guy is like, I've never seen anything like that. So especially on Zoom too. So yeah. Yeah. So real quick, same thing, little intro. Most mm -hmm. might see many familiar names on here. You probably have clients of your own in here as well. Um, if you could just give a little overview of who you are, what business businesses you now have and operating, mm -hmm. and then dive into some, you know, opportunities that you've taken advantage of since COVID and, you know, opportunities that you're really engaging in today that you think might be of value. And to recap on what, what I got out of what Dr. Eddie said was, you know, tapping into your speaking skills, your writing skills, communication skills, um, and social media clearly. Mm -hmm. Clearly, somebody is uh, following my 90, 90, 90 day rule to create content. This is videos I put out on on YouTube and I talk about it quite often. So, you know, take advantage, uh, document your process, even if you don't post it right away, but start documenting what it is that you're doing in this world, how it is that you're impacting other lives. And eventually you have an archive of data that you can start releasing on the social media and it's, it's not going to feel like work, you know, and you're going to have a nice system uh, to push out that content to avoid burnout when you do that particular strategy. So passing it over to you, Alex. Yeah. So I initially only had a marketing company. That's how I know Denzel. And I've had that for about four years. And that was a great first business because it was very low startup capital. It was maybe like $1,000 to start. And that's been my main business for the past four years. But then recently, um, like a year and a half or two years ago, I started a construction company. And so remodeling kitchens, bathrooms, driveways, painting, anything involving a house we do. And looking back, I kind of wish I started this business first, then the marketing, because I think with this business, the thing is the demand is infinite anywhere in the country, whether it's plumbing, electrical, drywall, flooring, any trade that you could think of, there's infinite demand for it, but there's a lack of supply. I mean, everybody here knows somebody or has dealt with a contractor that is shady, doesn't communicate, doesn't show up on time, is sloppy, drinks on the job. I mean, everybody has one of those stories, but there's so much money to be made. I mean, if somebody does their windows, their roof, their flooring, and then a kitchen, I mean, that's $150,000, easy. So if you do 10 of those a year, that's a million dollars in revenue and the demand is there. And then after maybe two years, you can build such a good foundation of business that you don't ever have to spend money on marketing or worry about leads or anything like that. You'll have too much business. I mean, just right now, I have too many clients, too many leads versus the marketing company. It's going well, but I kind of need to push for more leads and get more clients because like people don't wake up really and think I need marketing today or I want to start a business today. Right. Maybe some people do, but a lot of people don't. But somebody's house, it's emotional. It's like, honey, we need to do the bathroom. We need to do the kitchen. Like it's it's a need for them. Even if it's not really, they still think it's a need and they'll find the money to do it. So I think the opportunity is doing something that seems Oh, like, I don't want to be a plumber. I don't want to be like flooring or a painter. Like that sounds low class, but I know painters that make a million dollars a year in income, not revenue and in income. Like somebody owns a painting company, a guy, he has crews, he gets jobs. He's booked out seven days a week. He makes over a million dollars a year in income um, from a painting company. You don't need a license. You need insurance, but that's like a hundred bucks a month. And it costs like nothing to start up. So like I said, I think with the marketing company, that's a great business. It's online. I could work with anybody in the world and I've gotten people great results. But with the construction company, that's just a much more scalable business. And I mean, I don't really even need to market anymore after such a short period of time. And so I think the opportunity for people is don't be so tempted to start that sexy business, like starting an app or a tech startup or even a marketing company. I mean, it's definitely a good business, but just try to look and make a 180 and look at plumbing or something that doesn't even need a license, a flooring company, a painting company, or even partnering with somebody, a cousin, a friend, a coworker that can do the work, that knows how to do flooring, that knows how to do roofing, painting, concrete driveways, like anything that doesn't need a license or even needs a, a quick license and try to partner with them 
and see if you could just market, you could sell, you can get the customers, they could do the work and you split the money. Um, so I'd say like, that's the biggest opportunity. And I'm going to try to start other companies in this realm of blue collar businesses. I want to start an HVAC company. I want to start a concrete company that only does concrete. Um, and these are things that will forever be in demand. Whether it's an economic boom or a recession, people will always have the money to work on their homes in any capacity. So I would say, yeah, that's what I do. The construction company and the marketing company, um, they're totally opposite. Like I show up to people's houses and they don't think I'm a contractor <laughs> in the least bit. So, which I, I like that though, because that's a good competitive advantage. I show up on time. Uh, presentable. I have, you know, good communication, good texting, email, etc. But there's an opportunity there. I mean, if you want to make even six figures, a hundred thousand dollars in income, you can make that in the next 12 months if you start a service business. Even if it's washing windows, installing windows, like it doesn't have to be fancy. But anywhere in the country, you have the opportunity to do so. So I'd say that's the biggest thing I want to share is don't be so tempted by the sexy, fancy companies and business ideas look at the opposite way and see what are businesses that nobody's thinking of starting. And let me look at those and let me see how much they cost to start and can I do them? So I'd say that's what I'd recommend. I, I like that because it's, you're, you're talking about real GDP type work, not, yeah, yeah. you know, let me start a home-based business and I'm going to make seven figures. Which is fine. I mean, no, people do it. It's, it's, it yeah, it no, it is. It, it does. But I mean, look at me, right? I'm an example of that. Exactly. You know? Yeah. But in, in a way, there's a lot of people, especially on this call, that are career people, blue collar, white collar. You've been in your career for 20, 30 years. And you look at me, a kid, 26 years old, and I can never do what Denzel does, you know, create content mm -hmm. and, you know, talking to these people and how he gets up there and does all this stuff. And he's got all this lighting and I, I'd get a headache just setting up my recording. Mm -hmm. So instead of and, and here's the issue, that's what a lot that you see on social media today is how to become a you know a sexy influencer you know a fitness model mm -hmm. um you know selling you know clothes and suits and it's it's sexy it's hot it's attractive easy money get easy rich money quick, quick all that. money and it's crypto. very possible yeah crypto mm -hmm. you know network marketing multi-level marketing direct sales start a home-based business sell this product you know wholesale resale etc cetera, etc cetera. like all of that is fun and sexy, but the reality, 95%, 90% will fail. Like they just fail, mm -hmm. right? Right on their faces because they didn't have a foundational business strategy, an actual real business strategy to, to attach themselves to that opportunity. And so when you get sucked into the, the opportunities that are out there by these you know content creators, it can really um, lead people down a, a wrong path um, you know, even in the financial services space, there's there's these other opportunities that nobody is grabbing and there's a ton of money to be made. There's real mm. labor, right? It's real labor involved, real work. But well, I, mean, I won't even say that. I mean, if I could jump in, go ahead. like these hands are not calloused. I mean, people <laughs> can probably tell I'm not a very hands on type of person, um, but I don't need to be. I mean, as a general contractor, I market my company, which now I don't even have to do. Okay. I market. I visit the customer, I give them a price, I build my profit into it. I have the crews and the subcontractors that do the work, whether it's a kitchen, a bathroom, I mean, you saw the video, you know, the work is great, but I'm just managing the crew, the client, managing the money in between, and that's about it. So it's not even like I do labor. It is, of course, you have to go visit job sites and it's a physical job, but the opportunity is there. If you want to hustle, if you want to make money and do it in a way, in a way that's simple, it's not complex, um, but it just takes work and it takes thinking differently, not thinking get rich quick. Thinking in 12 to 18 months, I can make six figures with this and go from there you to share and you can you can hear me right yes now i can uh can you talk about how you took advantage of the sba i think it was eidl mm -hmm. ppp loans can you can you talk a little about that because i know that's what you gave was very specific in in that particular industry but i'd like you to dive deeper on generally how you accessed capital in a very short period of time and if you can share some numbers if you're you know open and transparent. oh yeah definitely mm -hmm. So I would say a big mistake that people make when starting a business is they don't think of a runway. 
meaning financially, personally, with paying my mortgage, car, kids, wife, whatever it is, how long do I have in cash in the bank to make that last? And I think a lot of people, especially coming from a job, they just income every two weeks, they get paid no matter what. But with your own company, especially in the beginning, that cash flow is not even, it's very uneven. So I would recommend having a lot of cash to start. And even when you have a company that's doing well, you need a lot of cash on the balance sheet. Maybe you have a bad quarter, bad two quarters, a bad year. So you don't want to run out of money because that's the end of your business. What if you had enough money to last another two months, three months, you hit a breakthrough and then you started killing it. Right. You don't want to run into that running out of money because you'll never know what could have been if you don't have the capital, whether it's a line of credit, an EIDL loan, which is gone now, or an SBA 7A loan. And so the EIDL is done. That was a COVID product. But the SBA 7A loan, you can get that today. And that's more of a traditional business loan. I wouldn't say it's the lowest interest rate. I mean, it's variable. So right now it's 6.75 percent. Um, so it's reasonable. It's pretty reasonable and all banks offer it. Many banks offer it. So it's something where if you're starting a business, you can get one. If you want to buy a business, you can get one. Or in my case, with the marketing company, I had a lot of revenue, a lot of profit. So I said, let me capitalize on that, kind of pull money out of the business, get some extra capital and put it to work. So I got the SBA 7A loan. It was for about 150,000. Um, and it was a, like a little bit after COVID. So it wasn't really a COVID thing. Um, like I said, you could still get it today. And that just gave me so much peace of mind. Of course, I'm paying interest, right? Like it's not free money, but it gives me peace of mind that I can invest into my business and I can take risks and I have a lot of time because I don't need the business to kill it today or next month or next quarter, even this year. I need it to be killing it five years from now. That's what I'm building for. By making investments now, by taking risk, by taking out that loan now, I have the runway to invest the capital, invest in marketing, grow the company. So that in five to 10 years, I mean, that $150,000 loan, it's gonna seem like nothing in that time frame. And so if you're starting a company, have a company, anything like that, you need more cash than you think you do. Especially if you have a family, if you have obligations financially. I mean, Denzel and I were pretty lucky that we started our businesses young with no kids, no wife just yet, um, very minimal expenses. So we can take the risk like very, very quickly. But imagine if you're you know, used to having a job with consistent income, you have all these bills. I mean, you need a lot of cash. I would say at least if you're starting a company, you probably need, I'd say a year of income, saved up cash, tax already paid on it, everything. So if you make 80K a year and you want to go full time into a business, you need 80K saved. In my experience and opinion, working with myself, a lot of clients um, doing the same thing. So whether that's going with SBA, whether that's getting a HELOC, whether that's getting a business line of credit, you have options. But um, I would say once you have a business that's doing well, you show growth and profit and revenue, then you can go to a bank show them your balance sheet, your profit and loss and say, hey, I'm doing well, I wanna grow, give me the capital I need to grow. Even if you don't need it, because when you need the money, the bank is not gonna take your call. Denzel knows that, we all know that. Um, so when you don't need the money, like I didn't need the money, when you don't need the money, you get access to it. And if you wanna pay it back early, then you do. But you don't wanna need the money and have one month left of your business runway and then wanna call a bank and make it happen because they're gonna know what the deal is and they're not gonna give you the money and the capital that you need. And so that's the thing, if your business can be successful, it's possible if you give it enough time. But if you run out of money, you lost time and you lose, so. Got it, and what was the process that you took to you know, obtain that, that capital? Do you have to hire someone or did you go right through like a government resource? The website in terms of that the, those SBAs and things like that is there someone that you used to kind of help with the process or do you kind of like do it by yourself yeah well I got lucky because she's not really my aunt but she's a close family friend she works for an SBA sort of loan provider and that's what their job is they connect you with banks that are interested in your loan and they give you the money so she's kind of the middleman so she connected me with a few banks but once I was with the bank it was all on me I had to give them so many documents. I mean, it was probably 30 documents, extensive balance sheet, profit and loss for previous years, tax returns. And I had to detail 
Like, what was I going to use the money for? Why did I need it? Like very, very detailed. And they dig into it too. They call you multiple phone calls. They want to figure out, is this worth the risk on the bank? They check your credit, of course, everything like that. But I was really invested in getting that money. So it took me from start to finish exactly one month from originating the idea to get the money to having the money in my account. It took 30 days. So it's possible to get it quickly. But once they say, hey, we need these 10 documents, you got to stay at the office or at, ha at your house, do it overnight, send it to them immediately. That's what I did. I was up till 4 a.m. doing paperwork because I just knew I wanted the money like that at that point. And so I wanted it. And yeah, it took 30 days. Gotcha. Okay, mm -hmm. I appreciate that. And, uh, and if you don't mind, if there's like a, uh, a website or link uh, to to the SBA directly, or if there's other, you know, other than, you know, your aunt uh, or close family friend says she works directly uh, with the SBA, correctly? Yes, but and there is, a, there is on the SBA website, there is something where if you put in your information, they have their own matching system where they can match you with banks that are interested based on what you provide. Um, so I'll look for the link for that and I'll send it to you. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm going to put a little, I'll try to put a little document together to mm -hmm. uh, everything that we're discussing today. Um, and for everyone else, you know, be sure to be taking notes as I'm jumping from person to person. Uh, but thank you for that because I think that's a, a critical component of, of running and operating a business. Um, a lot of people are afraid to acquire new debt after they've been doing velocity banking and they've had this mentality of paying off debt as soon as we accomplish that that's wonderful right you've, you've paid off debt you've increased cash flow let's consider having access to debt whether it's through business credit cards you know um, line of credit like you said like just ready mm -hmm. there and available in the times when you qualify most for it right? which is when you don't need it exactly yeah and that's when you get the best rates the mm -hmm. best deals the best offers um mm -hmm. so in your case you you did uh, obtain an sba loan right yes mm -hmm. what was the rate and the amount that you got so i got 150,000 for the sba 7a loan and the rate was 6% but it's variable so you see with the federal reserve they raise interest rates i think 0.75%, 75 basis points. So now it's 6.75%. So here's a risk where if you invest all that money into the business and they raise rates from 6% to 8%, I mean, your payment just went up 25% relatively based on the interest. Um, so that is something you need to manage, but um, as long as it doesn't go above, if it goes to 9%, I would just pay it off immediately um, because I still have the capital, but that is a risk as well. It's variable, not fixed. Gotcha. And that's dealing with mm -hmm. loans, obviously. But, you know, when we're dealing with, you know, HELOCs and, and personal lines of credits and credit cards and business lines of credits, those things just remain active and ready, readily available. So keeping those alive, you know, is also very, very key. Um, so I appreciate you sharing all of that. Um, and if there's questions along the way, you guys put them in the chat. Um, if you wrote something down, you want to hear a little more insight, definitely put it in the chat. I'm working on my mic situation for some reason. This $500 microphone doesn't want to work with me today. That's how it works. And then these $20 little headphones, they work better than my AirPods. That's why I don't use the AirPods. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm talking right through my uh, computer and I'm pretty sure you guys hear me. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Oh, you're not using the microphone? I'm not. No. It's See, I don't even know the difference. It <laughs> sounds like a little different, but it doesn't sound worse. It just sounds different. Yeah. But definitely legible. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Absolutely. I want to jump to Nick now. Nick's in the house. Uh, if you're available. How's it going, y'all? Nice. Yes, sir. Somebody came prepared. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to spotlight you real quick for everyone to. Thanks for having me, brother. Once yeah, again. Yeah, definitely. So Nick, you are representing a ministry. You're a friend of mine. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the people on this call do not know who you are. You're a bit new to my yeah. community, my environment, what we're doing. So I'd like you to definitely give me a, a background, spend some time on this, a little about yourself, how we connected and talk about the ministry, talk about the different things that you're, you're working on and mm -hmm. then dive into the financial opportunities that you know this particular ministry has to offer or anything else that you see in the environment today that you want to you know bring to people's attention hey consider this look at this etc cetera, etc cetera. 
Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Denzel. So my, my name is Nicholas Gonzalez. Uh, I represent ICOVEST. ICOVEST is a, a sovereign ecclesiastical trust. Um, it, it, we teach jurisdictional finance and I've been teaching jurisdictional finance for the last uh, four years at this point. Um, I'm the host of the Financially Lit podcast. So I we try to put out some s short clip videos on YouTube about what we do. Um, but how I got to meet Denzel, we we're actually watching Denzel's channel for uh, the last three or four years as we've been trying to teach our community velocity banking. And he does such a good job at explaining it. And we've been, you know, using him as a, as a teacher and he didn't even know it. Um, and then and then one day, you know, we reached out and I wanted to do some cross collaboration or just see if he was open to the idea of a syndicated effort around life insurance, uh, which we affectionately called TOLI, the trust owned life insurance model. Um, and how we were doing it with our ministry, how we were using these ecclesiastical trusts versus these commercially regulated type trusts and, and what's possible when you do that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, essentially what we try to bring to the family, what we try to bring as our value add to people is, is a syndicated effort to acquire cash flowing vehicles for the family, cash flowing assets in general. Um, what that looks like is we have three asset pools that are currently available. It's called asset pool one, AP one, asset pool two, AP two, and asset pool three, AP three, pretty straightforward. Um, if you're not familiar with what a syndication is or what a syndicated effort is, that's simply our ability as a community to squish funds together for a common goal or a common purpose. Um, in the case of AP1, Asset Pool 1, that common purpose is acquiring cash flowing real estate for the syndicated effort as a whole. So what that looks like is if anybody has the you know wherewithal or financial goals um, or extra cash flow in their life that they're looking to seed places to grow it, uh, maybe you're looking at thinking about getting in real estate yourself or have thought about trying to uh, you know acquire something that cash flows that way. Um, we give you an opportunity to learn how to get in business for yourself, but not by yourself necessarily. Um, you know, instead of taking all the risk of your own and putting it down at a bank and then going to acquire, you know, a few units, for example, and then, you know, managing them yourself, we have the ability to lower the risk tremendously. Um, by taking a piece of our wealth and pushing it together with a, 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 a the vast community that we have at ICOVEST so that we can use the economies of scale to acquire bigger and better assets than we could have on our own. Um, the point of doing it in an ecclesiastical trust, the way that we do for the church, for our ministry, um, is anything that comes through our ministry is actually qualified capital. Um, if you don't know what that means, it means we're mandatorily tax accepted from the tax code. It's under Title 26. Section 508C1A of the tax code, and, and it, it sets our jurisdiction apart from the commercial realm. And it's kind of a paradigm shift of how you view your finances and how, how you're looking at, you know, when I operate over here, I got to give to Caesar what Caesar's is due. You know, you're playing commercially, there's taxes associated with uh, the kind of activities you do when you, you know, buy or sell or you have an income or you create a revenue, things like that. Um, we teach the jurisdictional differences between those types of activities and how you can play the same game, but structure them in a way where you are participating through a, a church's trust model, our ecclesiastical state's trust model. Anything that we do as community members through this model is qualified capital. So I was trying to get uh, Denzel to understand the concept of how the church operates jurisdictionally and how we teach at ICOVEST Academy these, these differences. We made, we made it an academy specifically for this purpose so that we can teach people you know, this whole paradigm shift that I'm talking about. Um, it, there's, a, there's a very helpful chart that's in the academy. Um, that's, it's, a, it's a triangle pyramid that defines how law is derived on this planet, how nations see the, that law and, and how they implement it and how the jurisdictions separate each other. What's very interesting to learn and to come to find out is that ecclesiastical law is the tippity top of the food chain for all law on the planet. Every law is derived from that jurisdictionally. You have your um, uh, your common law underneath that, and then you have your maritime admiralty law, and you get into our, our kind of uh, commercial jurisdiction that we all know and love and operate in and pay taxes to normally. So. What we're trying to get people to understand is one, that this, this separate jurisdiction exists through the church. We're trying to get people to engage with it so that they, one, know how it operates. Two, if your goals, your financial goals uh, are lined up with trying to acquire cash flowing assets for the family, we could do that through real estate, through our syndicated model. We could do it through our trust owned life insurance model as we're help, Denzel's helping us build that out with uh, through our term insurance and our whole life insurance. 
um, which is a deep conversation. And I know I'm just trying to be a high level right now, but we can always have those conversations if you'd like to, Denzel. Um, and just trying to take a little bit of page out of what we were talking about earlier that Alex was bringing up um, about funding for small businesses or, you know, making sure that you have enough capital or making sure that you have enough runway to get your, uh, your dreams accomplished. Um, we, that's where our AP3 program comes in. It's our asset pool three. It's a staking program for small businesses or large businesses that are looking for capital funding. Um, what it is, is you put 3% into our staking program for our stable coin. And we have a group that we partnered with. They're, they're a private uh, organization called the Prado Group. Uh, they are willing to fund projects that create GDP in America. So if you stake 3% into a small business funding project, they're actually willing to fund 100% of that project. Now, why would they do that? Well, they're looking to have pieces of a bunch of cash flowing assets because they have deep pockets and they have the ability to do that. So they're looking for a 20% equity stake in whatever it is that you're building with this funding that's uh, that's coming from them. The cool part is, is you have the ability to negotiate with them at the beginning of the deal when you're getting your funding released to you for whatever project that's, that you've uh, outlined, that's been approved, you know, funding's coming your way. Um, you have the ability to buy them out of that 20% equity position. That's called a leveraged buyout. And you can negotiate that over one to seven years. You can even use the cash flow from whatever it is that you built to pay them off for that 20%, reclaim your equity position in uh, whatever asset that you built, you know, that that could be acquiring cash flowing real estate, for example, um, it could be building your business a little bit uh, farther if you need a capital expenditure, if you're looking to uh, just scale in general, there's many, many scenarios where small businesses need funding, obviously. Um, and it's just one more route that you can explore as a possibility in the marketplace to get something done um, in your expansion efforts. If you maybe you thought about getting in the game, but you haven't had the capital to do it before, but you have the ability to put 3% into something like this to fund 100% of whatever plan you have on your table right now, then I think it's a good opportunity to sit down and explore um, how the inner workings are, you know, ask all the in the weeds questions about how uh, the funding works, how what's tied to it and stuff like that. Um, but let me digress for a second because I, I just explained very quickly at a high level three different syndicated efforts and i, I want to give it back to denzel for a second to ask some questions <laughs> yeah so you just dropped a, a a big bomb on us of information and i'm taking notes on the board here as you um shared but i kind of broke it up to three things you mentioned syndication yes, right sir. that's really pooling a lot of resources from a multitude of people together right to acquire a cash flow vehicle and on mm -hmm. top of that you're saying that you i everyone in this group is able to do that in a totally separate jurisdiction that is labeled as qualified capital which is mandatorily tax accepted and yes sir then you mentioned a um, asset pools where the church itself has cash flow vehicles and opportunities that the church is doing so mm -hmm. what you're saying is i could come in and have like my own ideas in terms of what i want to do but then i can also oh, yeah. participate in what the church and the ministry is actually doing and then you finished up with a, a staking program which which also can be through what the church efforts are or you individually having a business idea and opportunity that you want to exercise in the commercial jurisdiction, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And create the cash flows necessary uh, and the profits to have a viable, successful business. Now, absolutely. With that being said, um, can you guide us in terms of what are the preliminary, like pregame work that someone on this call that's n never met you before, brand new, can uh, start doing? to say, sure, I'd, I'd like to learn more and, and get involved. Uh, what would be some of the first action steps that you would have someone take? And if there's links involved, if you don't mind dropping that in, in the chat uh, mm -hmm. so that people can take their notes and take action when they're ready. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, first and foremost, I would direct people to the academy. It's icovest.academy and I will leave the link uh, in the chat for everybody to take down. Um, from there, after we, you know, you, start poking around the academy a little bit. Step one is kind of the top of the funnel, 50,000 foot overview for what we do at ICOVEST. Uh, we affectionately call this meeting a CPO. It's a cooperative procurement opportunity. Uh, it's about 20 minutes. Um, and like I said, high level gives you a overview about what we're doing at ICOVEST. 
Um, and from there, if it is something that you think that you want to do, uh, we do a seven day free trial at the Academy so that you can get into our community. You can get signed up for our Monday calls and our Wednesday calls. Denzel actually participates on our Monday calls um, almost every week, every other week uh, they're about to give us a whole life insurance update about what we're doing with our trust owned life insurance and our syndicated effort, how we're building that with IcoVest. Wednesday nights is our finance call. So we're, we're bringing everything together, the community, all the leaders get on the Zoom um, so we can discuss the, the cutting edges of what we're doing, the trust that we're building, um, you know, how much funds that we're getting into this uh, effort, growing the community, et cetera. Um, but after the seven day free trial, it's $21 a month to stay enrolled in the academy. Um, but during that seven day free trial, we encourage everybody to submit what we call a capital needs analysis. It's called a CNA. And really all that is, is your willingness to share your financial picture with us. Um, you submit your financial information. We put it into uh, one of our, our spreadsheets so that we can easily work with your data. Um, and then we're trying to try to apply our systems to your scenario so that we can see, is there anything that we can do to help you uh, reach your financial goals? Um, we deploy Velocity Banking uh, at, like Denzel does. Um, we have a debenture management system for that purpose. Um, we're also going to just try to figure out, you know, based on your net operating income, is there anything that we can do to help you increase cash flow um, or maybe participate in a syndicated effort? Maybe you understand that the dollar is crashing and that you need to protect the value of that wealth. We store silver digitally in our trust for that purpose specifically um, so that, you, you know, it's it's protected and it's had confiscatable jurisdiction and things like that. Um, but like I said, step one would be going to the academy, you know, seeing a CPO. And then from there, I would walk you through every single step after that, that I just laid out. I would show you where you're going at the academy, how to sign up for Monday and Wednesday, um, how to submit your capital needs analysis, how to get into the curriculum um, in the school. Uh, because once you go through the curriculum in the school, there's actually a certification at the end uh, that you can take the, this little test over and over again until you uh, actually pass the exam. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't, um, what's the word, penalize you for getting anything wrong. It just teaches you over and over again um, until you can finally get that certification. Once you get that certification, if this is something that you think that you want to do, we'll show you how to open an ICOvesting account. Um, an IVA, ICOvesting account, is what's necessary to participate and engage with our community at ICOvest. Um, it's simply 21 uh, ounces of silver. It's one time covestment of 21 ounces. And that doesn't go to me or to Denzel or anything like that. That's simply you funding your account. You know, once you open your account, you have 21 ounces of silver sitting there in the silver position. And you can, you know, top it up from there at one coin at a time or store significant wealth there. We can roll over, you know, 401ks, IRAs, that kind of stuff to protect the wealth. Um, we'll show you how to leverage that position later to put it into cash flowing vehicles, whether that's real estate, life insurance, our AP3 staking program, uh, et cetera. So um, I, I know I'm saying a lot right now, but I'm just trying to give you as much value as I can uh, while I have you guys here. Yeah, no, that's this is I really appreciate you diving deep into that. And this is the type of audience that I, I know can handle it if they can hear me talk and blabber about interest rates on line of credits and how to offset borrowing costs and how to make a chunk and how da, 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 da. like there mm -hmm. these people are definitely going to follow along um, and they will take action um, when they're good and ready so i do appreciate you being here and dropping on this value now i want to kind of compare some of the things that you just said because um, this is going to lead into um, one of the financial opportunities that i'm going to share uh, to close us out for the evening Okay. which is you you just described opportunities that the u.s government can offer right in their True. particular jurisdiction but here you are saying that the church in its own right in its own jurisdiction can do the very same exact things but with these added layers of asset protection right of absolutely really protection from the law that is created and defined by man but then there's mm -hmm. also god's law and it's like both what you're basically saying is both jurisdictions recognize each other and yes. both both are protected from each other so it's this separation of of church and state which is what you're yes. presenting here and that mm -hmm. in and of itself is a financial opportunity mm -hmm. and i i really appreciate you sharing that so um again if there's any questions that you guys have along the way please put it in the chat because i'm going to just kind of jump to the next person that i want to introduce and then i'm going to close it out with myself and then we'll jump into the q a so awesome thank thanks you. for the opportunity Enzo. yeah thank you so much uh so with that i'm going to take you off here 
And I want to ask if Shinora, I see you on the camera. Are you available to speak? That the kids sure. are sleep? Yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> so um, I'm not sure how much you've、uh, heard, but I would like to have you introduce yourself. Tell us about who you are, what you do, your business model,、mm-hmm. um, and if there's any opportunities that you yourself are engaging with in the marketplace today that you think would be of value. That's really the purpose of this phone call is literally, I just merged about five or six different communities into one household、uh, where we can you know, converse, dialogue, ask questions, see who's doing what. And、mm-hmm. I wanted to bring you on because over the last year now, Probably more, longer than that, right? We've, we've been、yeah. uh, connected with each other.、Um, mm-hmm. I've been coming to your、uh, group and giving as much value as I can. And you've been sending me、uh, a ton of business, a ton of women that are looking to improve their finances. And part of my mission is working with moms, single moms, divorced moms, widows, just women in general that are trying to regain their authority in this world, their financial authority in the household to be better stewards. Better managers of money and、um, really teach their children those same financial principles along the way. So I, I give the floor to you. Well, thank you, Denzel. Yes, it's, it's been a wild time. It's definitely flying.、Um, I am Shinoria. I'm known in my community as the queen of wife coaching. I really very simply just help women to understand how to know and love themselves before they love anyone else. And wrapped up in that is a high focus on self love and understanding their relationship with their creator and understanding that their confidence comes from him. And when they really embrace that and start living and walking in that, then they understand the path has already been laid for them. So there's less anxiety and fear along the path. So, your mission and my mission were definitely closely linked and aligned. And it was just a blessing being able to connect personally our、uh, communities. Now, with respect to the marketplace,、uh, though it may not seem like it on its face, one of my very, very、um, central pillars to my business, my wife coaching business, is helping families to build generational wealth. I do believe that a lot of the breakdown of the family and the family household in, our, in the United States of America specifically has been linked to the tearing down of our homes and our households and having separate homes, broken homes, and then our financial leverage being minimized because we are trying, we lose economy of scales when we're operating separate households. So I look to help、uh, couples and specifically women understand how we can strengthen our position, not just spiritually, but also financially by strengthening our households. So I have a very strong interest in the money part. Let me just say that. So, coming right behind Nick with iCovest, you know, Denzel, I've been very, very interested in that lately. So, as we were prepping for this, I was taking lots of notes and I definitely appreciated hearing about AP one through three, specifically because a number of my clients, some of whom are here right now, have some additional cash flow, but they want to ensure that it is put in a place where, number one, it is less. Uh, taxed, it is、uh, <laughs> going to produce a greater income for them. But number two, it's less, I don't want to say less risky, but not as exposed as perhaps stock market investments might be, which are definitely giving my husband nausea right now as an investor. So hearing about that is great because even from a group perspective, Hearing about how we could potentially leverage from a community going in and doing this work together and not just relying on 501c3s, which was all I ever knew about. And so I'm thankful to you, Denzel, for even sharing the insight about iCovest with me so that we can continue to get smart on that. Now, thus far, I haven't taken advantage of iCovest yet, but I did take advantage of personal and business lines of credit. So for me, when I shifted from my nine to five, And started this business years ago. At first, I had a business line, I mean, a personal line of credit because of what I learned from you, and then、mm-hmm. was able to leverage the business line of credit by protecting my business credit score and getting net 30 accounts and then building that way. And so that did provide the additional capital that was necessary to weather the storm, especially the pandemic. Now, what I didn't do yet was apply for an SBA loan. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm definitely interested in doing that a bit more.、Um, I see that it's going to be 30 pieces of、uh, data that I might have to have ready. But that is definitely an option that's available. I have individuals who actually work for SBA. 
So yeah. as close as I am to it, it's senseless that I haven't taken advantage of it myself, mm -hmm. but I also second that gentleman. Um, what I think has been most impactful for my community is understanding that many of these options are available and they can be very helpful, even if they weren't taught in school. That has been one of the biggest hiccups for my clients, I will say is, well, why have I never heard of this before? And so being able to bring our communities together where we can all raise our hands and say, no, I've actually used this. I've tried this. It works. That's been very, very helpful for us to be able to continue to build. So if it weren't for my using Velocity Banking, which Denzel, you talk, uh -huh. and if it wasn't for my personal and business lines of credit, when the pandemic hit and things were very uncertain and there was not a flow of clients for some time, we would have had some serious trouble. But we had because we leveraged those lines of credit, we were able to continue to buy the inventory. We were able to continue to pay for our operational services and fees until the enrollments picked back up. And so now that things are definitely going in the right direction and have been for quite some time, our focus is how can we empower our clients to also feel like they can invest in a more informed and a more unified fashion? Because I love what Nick said, wanting to go into business, but not necessarily wanting to go into business by themselves. Because you and I both know the entre entrepreneur world it's not for everyone, okay, mm -hmm. yep. on their own. But being able to do it as a group, being able to leverage our income as a whole, and to do this and have a separation between church and state, we're all ears. So yep. again, I'm excited to work with you and partner with you, Denzel. I thank you for sharing your platform today. And I continue to keep building the kingdom together as we go along. Thank you for that. So I want to um, add a little more here uh, in terms of what, what do people call you typically are you you're you know you said you're the queen of wife coaching right that's like your, that's right. your so <laughs> help <laughs> us um can, can you talk specifically in that realm of opportunities mm -hmm. what what lies there for maybe someone on the call that mm -hmm. has been in a 30 40 year successful marriage and maybe mm -hmm. wants to start a business talking about how to get married stay married um how to repair yeah. relationships because there's so many opportunities that yeah. relates to finances and it's dealing with emotions you know alex earlier talked about it, it's an emotional thing people working on their house so they're always going to have money to redo the kitchen redo the bathroom redo the patio uh got to do the roof got to do the windows there's always going to be money there but not necessarily marketing your business and so he tapped into the emotions of the marketplace and now he's reaping a seven figure business within mm -hmm. 12 months and mm -hmm. you know just so you all know alex is like two three years younger than me um so he's like killing it right now so with i, I want you to dive deep on what your particular yeah how your business really operates why is this important and mm -hmm. what is the opportunity there just kind of talking on the financial part of how you yeah. build that business model yes so yes i am my label if you will my title would be a wife coach i am a wife right. coach now you will in general hear people say life coach and i respect that however i specifically work with women who desire to be or are already a wife so i'm a wife coach i'm very, i've niched down very specific to that that community of women however um with regard to someone who might be interested there's there's multiple ways to attack that now we do train up other coaches in before boaz i think it's right behind me okay yeah. before boaz so anyone in the in the faith group will understand who i'm talking about there mm -hmm. uh, so we do train up junior coaches and senior coaches so that they can duplicate my overall business structure so i operate a community of women it is the true community we have our own private app we are connected we actually just popped off of our session and onto this session tonight and some of our ladies are married some of our ladies are not however there's a central focus on again building themselves up and being of greater use to themselves their family and their community at large so if someone said hey i want to i want to do that i want to do what she's doing well number one i have a background in therapy you do not have to have that to be a coach there's not an educational requirement to be a coach but that is why you need to vet your coach very clearly before you <laughs> sign up with one Correct. but if you have a background in therapy that definitely helps um can you have a seven figure business in less than 12 months? Absolutely. We were able to scale to seven figures in less than 12 months and it was no problem. Mm. So love it. 
<laughs> That's that. I will say I have a coach. I believe that every coach needs a coach because mm -hmm. if you want to do something faster, you need to learn from others' mistakes and figure out the path that was successful and pray and then move forward. So I wouldn't try to do it alone. However, for us, we operate on a private app. Mighty Networks has a great opportunity for you to build your space there and your clients can speak among themselves. Uh, you can go live there, you can share information, everything like that. So we really do have a community. And then we have what we refer to as the online digital university, which is like a hall and framework of video replays and footage and lessons. And then we have live sessions. So does what does it require to like I'm going through what the initial questions may be. I'm not reading chat. So if someone's asking something specific, let me know. But um, to start, I would say if you have any sort of cash flow from your nine to five, it's really just about picking the systems that are going to work best for you. Looks like I might have a little one joining me or oh, a dog. The systems that are going to work best for you, such as your, your email system, your platform, if you're going to use a similar system like I mentioned. Um, and where are you gonna show up? In a previous segment, Denzel, you spoke about social media. So are you gonna use social media for your business? I strongly recommend so. Will you be on Instagram? Will you be on YouTube? Will you be on LinkedIn? Will you be on TikTok? I don't necessarily think you need to do them all, but which one is where your target audience is? And then you show up there and provide value. And as, hey, can you pull this door for me? As you do that, as you continue to show up there and provide value, then those to whom you are attracting with your message can reach out to you and and get those services so i provide a mix of group and one-to-one -one sessions for women that want to learn the lessons that their wounds were meant to teach and understand what it is that it really takes to run a household and keep a marriage for life and be an amazing and irresistible wife these are lessons that are often not passed down from generation to generation, especially right. in communities that look like me. And so we're bringing that knowledge as a whole. So most of my clients say this is a premier finishing school for women. They're frustrated that it's not an actual school. They feel like it's that essential and we need it, but we attack it from every angle. So it's not just love talk, if you will. We have uh, Denzel, <laughs> we have finance coaching, we have personal styling, we have interior decorating, the list goes on and on. We really aim to give the woman everything that she needs to succeed in life, love and money. And so from that, initially, we started off as the LLC while I was trying out. And then once it was the uh, proven concept, then we switched to an escort pretty swiftly to take advantage of those Beautiful. tax benefits. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and then we just we operated from there. We, we brought on a, a initially it was a CPA after again, we were bringing in the cash flow. We shifted to a CFO. So we could have someone watching over all of our finances, ensuring that everything was gonna keep us nice and healthy. And it's bringing on those key members from trademarking before Boaz, um, to bringing on the right financial team, to bringing on the right litigation, having the attorneys in place so that our contracts were tight and so that we could protect what it was we were building. It's really how we did it. And again, having those personal and business lines of credit really went a long way because in the beginning, for the first, you know this Denzel, at least yeah. three to six months, you're just producing, you're just marketing, yes. you're just testing. And there's not necessarily clients banging your door down. Okay. Mm -hmm. It takes a while to get that messaging right. It takes a while to find what really works for you and find your brand voice. But once you do, and once you really allow your true mission and your assignment that's been put on your life to shine through, and you don't water it down, then the people who are meant to work with you will show up. And that's what's been helpful. So if there's anyone that I'm saying this and you've been wanting to start a business or you'd love to know more, just send me a message here, a DM. I have no problem sharing more and yeah. speaking with you. I'm an open book, open vessel. Everything I know, I'm willing to share with the kingdom. So. Beautiful, beautiful. Please um, provide action steps, a link, uh, your, your contact info in the chat, as well as Dr. Eddie, if you didn't already put your Relationship Academy, I think the two of you ought to get together. I'm not sure if you have already. I think I mentioned it to you, um, but mm -hmm. you and Dr. Eddie, I feel like are in similar fields of, you know, relationship building, um, marriage. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I think the two of you could do a, a phenomenal collaboration with each other. Um, so right. I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm instigating that. So maybe That's something will happen there. I don't know. But please put your information so that 
a lot of my uh, mothers that I work with can, you know, reach out to you because I know you're specifically working with women that, like you said, are already married or want to be married, want to be a wife. These are obviously areas that I do not specialize in, but I can't tell you, I can't tell you how many mothers I talk to that open up about this stuff. And little old 26 Denzel is just kind of listening. I've got my ears wide open. Um, but oftentimes I'm like, okay, so back to the numbers, right? So let's just, you know, so I never want to be rude in that sense, but I know it's not my area of expertise. So I try very uh, a little to provide any type of advice whatsoever, other than I would just say, I mention your name. Oftentimes I'll just share your name or I share Dr. Eddie's and try to push people to the correct resources, right? Yes. Because I'm dealing with the logic of people's minds, with the money, the dollars matching up, da da da. Yes. But then there's, you know, there's a lot of things I don't know about my clients that have dealt with financial traumas, financial yes. uh, uh, blocks, and mental health issues. Where I'm like, why did you apply for the line of credit when I told you to wait three months and you didn't listen mm -hmm. to me? And then, you know, so I often uh, uh, try to prevent these pitfalls. Right. But there's some oftentimes with your help, I know that I if I can get people into these other communities, and this is why I did this kind of merge all the communities into one house where we can say, OK, uh, I've been working with Denzel. I got my money right. I'm doing this, but I'm I'm just struggling where I can't seem to get a hold of this little uh, uh, what's it called? This retail therapy that I do. You know, I don't address that, <laughs> but I think you might or, or Dr. Eddie you might. Do. You know, you know, drive into that. So please put your information uh, in the chat so people can look you up and, and find your information. And with that being said, thank you for sharing um, the things that you're working on.